Today we're going to talk about a topic that I enjoy talking about um, and something that people are always surprised about by as well, mainly because it's kind of embedded in the culture. And I'm going to speak to it from the culture of GA, especially just because it's what I've been surrounded by and it's what I can refer back to quite easy. So today's topic is an overview of strengthening versus stretching for injury prevention. So what are we going to be doing? We are going to be looking at the effect of different interventions on injury prevention. So the first thing is, first, just to start off on exactly what I'm going to be talking about is I do not advocate static stretching before or during training, be it training in a gym, training on the pitch or any form of physical exercise. So when I speak about culture, um, again, referring back to GA culture, many times before and during a session, um, it's part of the culture, I suppose, to just get into a circle, hold a static position or force yourself into hold a position keeping muscles at a point of tension so again it's just culture to get into a circle and static stretch everyone down get the hamstrings grab your toe fucking pull it as hard as you can towards you and just hold that position for 10-15 seconds as if it's some medical anomaly that's going to help you cure all injuries um what it is really for most people and what is pretty obvious and why the captain or lots of team members will shout at you to get in for a stretch is it's a glorified extended water break. Um, so it's not really anyone's fault. They don't know any better. The managers don't really know any better. The managers think that it's a going to help massively with in- injury prevention because it's embedded so deep into our culture. Um, but all it is is it's just a long water break and that's all it pretty much is good for. Now before... I get into it again just to touch on it i'm just talking about static stretching holding a position or forcing yourself into a certain position or range of motion and holding that position so i believe that holding a static stretch before or during a gym session or before a pitch session or during a pitch session is doing more harm than good and we're about to dive into all of that now before when i speak of before is directly before so again if you stretch and maybe 10 minutes later you're getting into your session that's that's more than likely fine what i'm talking about is stretching and then jumping straight in like most people do so what happens during a static stretch so when you're static static stretching you're temporarily it temporarily increases the muscle's ability to access a greater range of motion So I asked the question, how many of you have witnessed this temporary increase in ROM, range of motion? So let's say, have you ever seen someone who can't touch their toes and a physio or a manager or anyone gets them to go through a specific movements and all of a sudden, wow, they can touch their toes. Come back to that person in 10 minutes time, they probably can't touch their toes because although they've stretched their muscles and lengthened their muscles temporarily, which is the important part, temporarily, there's no long-term benefit off that. You're not getting stronger muscles you're just putting it into a point of tension it's a very 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 short-term solution to a problem and it's not even a solution it just kind of masks over what's actually going on so this greater range of motion comes with a trade-off a lot of things come with a trade-off so your muscle will lose its elasticity and the amount of force it can produce diminishes once you start to static stretch it So as the contractile force is lower and the muscle is now converting less force, it causes a sudden decrease in strength. So this is where it kind of becomes problematic, I suppose. So something I've seen a lot of people doing is first, first and foremost, they don't warm up or else they might spend 10 minutes on a treadmill and then go bench pressing, which doesn't make much sense go into their first set so people don't spend time generally warming up they don't spend time more importantly specifically warming up so i've seen it a lot with squats and deadlifts or other compound lifts where they're not feeling good after a set or two and they'll resort to static stretching so someone on a squat their back just isn't feeling great so they'll get down and they'll go into a deep back extension and hold that stretch and hop straight under the bar again but what's that actually happening is you're just queuing that trade off of producing less force so producing less force and then jumping into a big lift obviously not a great idea so last week let's say you squat five sets of 100 kg this week the goal is to add 5 kg to every set it's a big jump but let's just make the example pretty simple so you jump into that and all of a sudden it's not feeling so good you do a stretch you're not able to produce as much force and then you hop under a heavier bar it's probably not a good idea So the meta-analysis I'm going to refer to today 
is by J. B. Larson in 2013, and the study looked at the effectiveness of exercise interventions to prevent sports injuries. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trial. So, a meta-analysis is just a bunch of different studies put together, and they looked at 25 studies. This included a total of 26,610 bodies, and they looked at a number of 3,646 injuries throughout this. And basically, this is what it came to. Stratified exposure, exposure analysis proved no beneficial effect for stretching, whereas studies with multiple exposures proprioception training and strength training showed a tendency towards increasing effect both acute injuries and overuse injuries could be reduced by physical activity programs so what does that mean what it did was it looked at it looked at stretching protocols put that in one block it looked at proprioception training so balance things like that uh, a lot of it was body weight or balance work um quadrilateral work etc the next was strength training which was your typical strength training plan and the third or the fourth was a multi-purpose plan so it incorporated everything stretching proprioception strength training so it came to the conclusion that stretching was the least effective so here's the graph from the study where they plotted all of the points so as you can see on one if you look at the red under one the closer you are to one the less effective you are so estimated stretch is the red box Obviously, it's on one showing it's the least effective. The blue is multi, so that's a bit of everything. Again, it's better than just stretching. The yellow is proprioception. Again, better than the two previous. And the strongest one, the one that is furthest away from the one, is strength training. So it's very clear that strength training plays such a bigger role in injury prevention than stretching does. Moving on then. More data in the GA space, so again, to refer back to that GA space. So what do we do now? I would say stop pulling your leg until it hurts and focus on getting stronger through a full or through a greater range of motion. So pay attention to strengthening specific areas under high demand in your sport. Hamstrings are a great example of, and it's definitely something I'll touch on again. So just to touch on this study, a study by John Murphy and some company. Uh, the study was counted from 2008 to 2015 and it found that hamstring injuries represented 24% of all injuries in GA and over 50% of just muscular injuries alone. And from 2008 to 2015, it counted 391 hamstring injuries within 15 elite teams that they followed. In 2015 alone, hamstring injuries were up on 29.1%. And repeated hamstring injuries that were reported at 33%. And we know when it comes to reporting or repeated injuries, people aren't as quick to, especially with elite teams where places drop very quick and there's someone to take your space. So ask yourself, would you rather stretch your hamstring or strengthen your hamstring? It seems pretty obvious to me. So again, going through that point, strength versus stretch. You have two options here. Um... You either hold your muscles in an isolated position for an extended period of time or work on building those muscles through a short, medium and lengthened range of motion. So an example of that of building your hamstrings through a lengthened range of motion could be a Romanian de deadlift through a medium or middle range of motion. It could be a trap bar deadlift where there's a bit of a squat involved and then through a lengthened, through a shortened range of motion, a simple leg curl or banded leg curl or Nordic curl. So again, what you're doing is you're making your muscles stronger. You're getting the adaptation. I know a lot of people I've had on a program with me haven't been able to touch their toes in years and four weeks of strength training and they're able to touch their toes and the only other times they'd be able to do it is after a few quick stretches they touch their toes. They'd have a 30 second, 60 second window that they could grab their toes in. Um, five minutes later they go back and there's no way they're grabbing their toe. Of course, that's anecdotal evidence, but um, it's definitely important to take into account that strength training is a lot more important than static stretching when it comes to injury prevention, both in the short and the long term. Um, this is going to get misconstrued, always does. Do I believe stretching has a place? Uh, it depends what the goal is. If your goal is pitch performance, gym performance, not really, especially not static stretching, not really at all. 
uh, after a session. If it relaxes you and calms you down, go for it. It's not going to do any harm. Wouldn't do it before. Wouldn't do it during. Stretching is still valuable. But as long as it's uh, dynamic stretching, for lack of a better word. So moving through different ranges of motions. More like mobility work rather than static stretching. So just separate the two. When, I, when I'm saying stretching here, I mean just holding a static position. The traditional ones that you see in GA pitches or with teams all over the country. Um, I hope this was useful. Of course, if you have any more questions, get in touch. I will be diving more into this, especially toward ACL and hamstring data in ireland and in the ga space there's a, a lot more papers out on it now and um, so i will be dissecting them a little bit more and throwing them up here but in the meantime any questions i will put my link at the bottom and give me a shout